Well hello everyone, Forex here with another tutorial. Today we'll continue with dialogues. If you missed the last video I recommend going over there and watching it first. I'm explaining the basic parameters of two classes we'll be working with today and in this video we'll expand our dialogue with more text and buttons. And I'll show you how to structure dialogue in a more logical and useful way with the help of inheritance in dialogues. If this concept sounds too alien to you or you will be completely lost at some point in this video, I can also offer you a video specifically focused on the theory of inheritance in dialogues, where I try to explain how the concept works and why it's so important for dialogue creation. Anyway, let's get to work. So when making bigger dialogues with several controls of the same class or several similar controls, I need a different approach than just having this giant class definition for each one of them. It quickly becomes confusing what I'm actually doing here and where the dialogue starts or ends. Also remember that missions can contain multiple dialogues with only very slightly different settings and it would be extremely tedious and wasteful to have to use all those lines again and again each time. So what we'll do instead? We'll take these classes away from the dialogue and we'll place them outside the dialogue itself. Now RSC text class will serve us as a template for all our text in all dialogues. I recommend you to never use it in a mission, but instead we'll make other classes inherit from this basic template and we'll work with those instead. This allows us to define a base class with all attributes configured to some base values. So we can say what type of font we want to use, what kind of control this is, or what the text alignment should be and so on. Then we'll create child classes which inherit those values. For those child classes, these values become the default ones. That means that all the child classes from this one base class will already know what type of font to use, how is the text aligned and all other attributes you have in the base class. Then you can go to the child class and overwrite only the attributes we need. Only the ones that are unique to this particular text. So in this example I want my base class for text to be very similar to what we had last time. A basic white text in the center of the screen with a standard size, nothing too special. We can actually leave most of these settings as they are. This is now my base class. All texts I will have in dialogues now by default will look like this. They will all have the same font, size, color, everything. Now if I want a green text at the top of the screen, I need to know what to change and what to overwrite. For green text I need to change the color, so I'll make the child class by simply writing the columns after the class name and writing the parent class. This indicates to the game that the class text1 inherits from RSC text. Now I can write only the lines I want to change. In my case I want to change the y axis to move the text up and color of the text to make it green. As the class inherits all other values by default from the base class, we don't need to define anything else. By default, this class will be the same type, same size, with the same text, ID number and everything else we defined in the base class, so the game knows perfectly how to draw it on the screen. Plus, we have specified what settings we need different than the base class and that makes our text unique. I hope you are starting to see the beauty of this system. Let's make another text, this time with a different text field, different size and again on a different place. Let's say bottom right corner. The process will be exactly the same. Again, all we need to do is to make a class, make sure it inherits from our base class with all the definitions and then just change the attributes we need. In this case we want it to move to the bottom right corner, meaning we need to change both x and y axis. Different size will mean different w for width, h for height and size x for different text size. Finally, different text is the text line itself. And we are done. All other properties are passed automatically, we don't need to care about them anymore. Let's try something different again. I like the settings of the text too. But I'd like another text like that in the upper right corner of the screen. Now I have two options. I can copy paste the one I already made and edit the y axis. Sure, this will work just fine. 
or I can make a class text 3 a child class of text 2. This will copy all properties from the base RSC text, then overwrite some of them with the ones in text 2, and now we can overwrite them again, more specifically add the Y line and change it so that it's in the top part of the screen. The X axis, size and text are copied from text 2 and all the rest from RSC text, our base class. This allows us to further structure our dialog controls. Let me give you just an example. You can create a class for all texts, defining the most basic properties and settings, then make classes for op4 text, blue4 text and independent text that specify the color of the text and the final text fields in the dialogs will just inherit from those base classes and they will specify what the text actually says. Alright, we'll make two buttons in the same style by having a child class inherit all the definitions we need and then just overwrite the ones we want to make a unique button. We will definitely want to change the X axis to shift them horizontally on the screen, the text to differentiate the options presented to the player and the action line as well. I'll make one button to accept and one to deny. Both buttons will close the dialog. But apart from that, one of them will display a short hint accepted and the other will display denied. Of course, that's just an example. You can make dialogues like these with different options that can drastically change the entire scenario. Let's just test the scenario now. We've made quite a number of changes to it, so it would be nice to see if it's actually working. When you'll be making your own dialogues, always remember that you are changing the description.ext file and the game doesn't accept many errors in there. It's a good practice to save often when you're in the editor and always save before you start making dialogues, after you've made any changes to the dialogues and once you get some functional code, save and test very often. It greatly helps you to find all potential errors, thus making your work easier. Also, after making any change in the description.ext, you have to save the mission in the editor before you are able to preview the mission, so it's best to get used to these rules. I want to show you one more thing. I'm sure you've already noticed the GUI editor available in the pause menu. It offers a not very well explained editor that can actually be used to make dialogues. Yeah, Arma 3 has got a lot of tools to make our work even easier than ever before, so if you are lazy or disoriented in the code itself, you can use this tool to do some basic layout of your dialogue with just a few clicks. However, it is crucial that you understand dialogues and know what you are doing, because this tool doesn't really do that much for you. Let's see how it works. When you open the editor, it shows you this grid where you can work. This is the space where you'll be making your dialog layouts. You can see I got a cursor and I can select the square I want to have my dialog control in. Now I can add a new control with a right click. This menu appears where I can choose one of many control types. For now we'll keep working with just a text and a button, so I want RSC text first. Done, edit. Um, the text is now on the place I selected before with my mouse. I can hover over it and see that it highlights with grey color. Now I can right click it again and edit the basic properties like text, position or color. So for now we want to change the position to absolute because that's what we've been working with so far. I will either make a video about different methods to select a screen region or just link you guys to some nice article about it. It can be pretty confusing and difficult to explain. Ok, next we want to give a name to our class, so it can be text1 for example. When naming a class, please only use one word and don't use names that have numbers at the start. The colors are standard RGBA format with values from 0 to 1 and the minus ones we can see here pretty much mean the default value whatever that is, so it will be a white text with no background. The size, again follows different rules than everywhere else and I suggest you to just fill in any number and then change it in the code later, because honestly this is not a great way to choose the text size. Ok, we are done, we can click OK, now the text field is properly set up. Of course it's possible to click and drag the dialog control on the grid, so we can move the control to the right spot once we have created it. 
hold down control and you will be able to move it freely without sticking to the grid. You can also use arrow keys for some more precise movements and hold down alt key to change the size of the control. Hold down alt and control keys to change the size regardless of the grid. Delete gets rid of the selected control. You can always press H or F1 to display the help with all controls if you wish to learn and try everything the editor offers. Now that the dialog is pretty much ready, we want to save it. So I'll press Ctrl and S and this little table appears. Project name can be dialog1 because we are making dialogs and format. So far we have been working with config controls as classes. So I'll choose that. It is the system I'm most comfortable using and we will need to make some small edits as well. So choose config controls as class, indent 0, IDC numbers and text plane. Alright, we can save and done. We can now exit the editor and see what the code looks like. So I will alt tab out of the game and open notepad++ or any text editor you use to make dialogues. By saving the dialogue it has been copied to my clipboard, so I can just paste it here now and see immediately what has been generated. Now if you have been paying attention throughout these dialogue related videos, you should know exactly what to do to make this code actually work. Right now by itself it won't do anything, it has a high chance of crashing the game, but other than that not much else. This is the part where you might want to add all the parts the interface editor didn't include. So we'll add some basic definition of a dialog, because right now all we have are just controls, not the dialog itself. And of course we can also benefit greatly from having those base classes, those templates we used earlier. Because those controls are pre-configured to inherit from them. So if we have them defined here, those controls will inherit our settings. Of course the final edits are entirely up to you, there is no best way to do this. I want to replace this grid nonsense with an actual number, because I'm still a bit nervous about the grid thing, it's a new concept for me and I don't entirely know how it works in some cases, so I don't want that. Buttons may need some action assigned to them, and overall now it's just your decision what you want to have in the dialogue. There is one more thing I would like to tell you about and that's curly brackets. I really, really recommend you to get a text editor that is capable of highlighting curly brackets because they are used to mark the start and end of code segments. So when making a dialogue you want to define a class for the dialogue, then you put down one pair of brackets, write some basic definitions for the dialogue and make another class of controls. Put down another pair of brackets because you need to define the controls section of the dialogue. But each of those controls is a class and you will need another pair of brackets for each of those controls. And now comes the fun time because you need to make sure all the control classes are within the class controls and all the class controls is within the dialogue class so that the game knows how are these things related. When you make your own dialogue from scratch and write everything by yourself it's usually not a huge trouble. But when you are copy pasting code from different places, you really want to think about what you are doing and how is the code structured and always make sure you have the right segments closed in the right places. I'm using Notepad++ with its ability to highlight all types of brackets, showing me exactly what part of the code is enclosed in this particular pair of curly brackets. If there are some brackets by themselves, the red highlight doesn't appear and I can check the code again. Any extra brackets are considered as an error and have the potential to crash your game. Any classes that have the brackets incorrectly opening or closing the code are wrong and have the potential to crash your game. The game compiler also doesn't necessarily tell you where exactly is the problem, because oftentimes it can't recognize the actual problem and only reports the results. So I really recommend you to always pay extra attention to how you structure your code. I may talk about some typical errors and how to deal with them in some future video. Alright, I hope you had fun. All the code will be again available on Pastebin with a link in the video description. So you can see how it behaves, you can try to do some edits. Hopefully you understood this video as it's one of the most important elements of dialogue creating in general. 
So that's it for this video, I hope to see you all in the next one, comment, like and share and have a great day.